Fine, I'll look up the German mud wizard. <clears throat> Robed wizard taunts police struggling in mud. What is happening here? What? Did he deploy a quicksand? Is this guy an earthbender? What is going on? Well, he is very powerful. What is this? Prestidigi prestidigitation? Like, goddamn. <gasps> oh! He there he is! <laughs> the wizard has been summoned. Man, all of these police officers are like turtles on their shell. Jesus Christ. This is a Oh, God. it's like toddlers when they're still learning how to walk. Are they all drunk or something? What is going on? There's no way it's that hard. This man's fighting for his life. <laughs> the mud wizard's gonna drag him back by the heels like a horror movie in a second. Man, at this point, just start doing like rolling. Like it's like. <laughs> Like cow tipping. The mud wizard strikes. We're gonna need reinforcements. His tootsies are stuck in the mud. Whoever set up this trap, though, really did a great job. It's like some kind of holy barrier. Oh, no. So this is how it all ends for this guy, huh? He'll just be stuck here forever. <laughs> oh, come on! He's almost there, let's go! Oh, no, it's like bowling pins. Oh, jeepers. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. There we go. That's the mud wizard for you. And none of them can navigate the mud pit. Oh, the mud wizard got him with a, a blast. Oh, there he is. You're in his territory now. This is his domain. His spiritual pressure is able to run rampant here. This guy is actually being swallowed whole. He's gonna need to be airlifted out here in a second. He's going really deep. He's going straight to hell. Like, good lord. They're gonna need to get the chopper and a ladder inbound ASAP. And the mud wizard's coming. Oh god! Oh no! Oh lord! Have mercy! It's Radagast the Brown! Man, this goes on for so long. There we go, we got him. Mission successful. He, he gets to go home his, and see his family. Close call though, close call. We almost lost him. Wow, that was fascinating. Jesus Christ. Someone give me... Give, give me the lowdown. What what happened here? Was this like a concert or what? Because I do remember there was also a filth wizard at a rave a long time ago. I also think it was Germany. There was a guy who dressed as a wizard and started playing in the mud and twirling around a baton. And it was a coal mining protest. Oh. Does anyone remember the wizard of filth? Damn, this is too new, so it's overriding the old one. Where is it? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Two wizards, one cup. Well, that's not the one. It was at a raid, uh, a rave. 
and there was a guy dressed in a gray wizard's garb. It was raining, it was muddy, and he was just busting it wide open. I wonder if it's the same guy. I'd, I'd really like to find the video. Does anyone know what it's called? Is it just Rave Wizard? I, I tried Mud Mud uh, Rave Wizard, but it didn't come up. Oh, here we go. Wizard Gandalf at a rave. I think this is it. This is not the one. How often does this happen? This must be a very common cosplay thing for raves. This is pretty cool, though. He was wearing gray wizard gear. I think he even had a walking stick. And he was dancing. Anyone at all? Why is it? I'm pretty sure I even showed it on stream at some point, like, two years ago. What the? Why is it so hard to find? Am I crossing wires? Was he not in a wizard's getup? I'm pretty sure he was. Here, I guess I'll pull this up. Maybe this will jog someone's memory. This is kind of what the environment looked like. But then there was a guy dressed as a wizard, and he was throwing mud, and he had a walking stick, I'm pretty sure. What the f- are you- What? In- Man? What the f- No, it's not the Glastonbury wizard. What? How does this fit anything I have said? I pulled this goddamn video up on stream years ago. Thanks, Eri, some filthy. Why can't I find it? Did it get taken down? Was it not as popular as I remember? Hey, I'm gonna describe a video real quick. Tell me if you guys know what I'm talking about so I can find it. Have, okay. have any of you seen Is it a the blippy video? No, that blippy <laughs> that blippy video though is so good. It was it was a music festival. It was a concert. It was raining. It was muddy. People were throwing mud at each other, and there was a guy dressed as a gray wizard throwing mud oh, at people. Oh, the one in Germany. Th yes, that's what I yeah, thought. But, yeah. I can't, but I can't find it. I can't find. Wait, it's a, I can. I can find it. Okay. Wait, cool. at, the at, the at the protest, you mean? No, 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 no. That's Mud Wizard. This is. I'm oh, talking Filth Wizard. This was like a level that... 99 Filth Wizard. Oh, Andrew, shit. how did we just think this was Mud Wizard? My bad. My bad. My bad. Yeah. It's not nothing like it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> can't... Very different. Very I can't wait magic. At all. How can chat not find it? No, no. I, I pulled this thing up on stream years ago. He was not the focus of the video. I will say that the video okay. was focused so on the, the concert. Red here. Yeah, the wizard was just like a pretty, like small piece of it. But like he became a meme. They called him the filth wizard on Reddit. M messy Merlin. <laughs> Maybe it was messy Merlin. If you're thinking of filth wizard. It's not messy Merlin. Literally nothing came up with that except a beached dolphin. <laughs> oh. Is it Polish Gollum at a rave? That's... Wait, that... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? It's so deep. <laughs> no, God... Is anyone even listening to me? It is not Polish Gollum. <laughs> he is not even wearing a wizard's garb. All right, so describe the video again, but, but this... like really go into some detail here. Oh, wait, we we forgot a guy. How did we miss that guy? So wait, we forgot a guy. This seems yeah, just chilling. This seems like a pretty common thing. So it was a rainy day. Oh. The video, it was still raining. Everything was covered in mud and and filth, and and there was a guy in a wizard's cloak who was throwing mud at people and dancing. And I'm pretty sure he had a walking stick. But and yeah, this are this you video is positive. Cool. It was a music festival. I am 100% sure it was a music festival. Unless they just do, like, mud parties. Oh my yeah. god, look at it. Yeah, he just knocks... That's he such uses a his good most idea. powerful spell to root that, <laughs> that SWAT police officer in place, and then he pushes him over. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he casts a crazy root on that guy. <laughs> the whole department honestly fell victim to the CC. It was really good. <laughs> Naked mud monster running uphill at Australian music festival? He definitely wasn't naked. I would remember if he was hanging oh, on. Oh yeah, this wait, is straight up. Wait, wait. He's straight up naked. Wait, I think I found it. What? What's it called? Uh, 
here, I'll just send it to you on Discord. I hope this is it. Is he is he like playing with like light up balls? Oh no no no, that's Rave Wizard. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Why are there so many wizards? There there's a lot of wizards in the what world. Up? You'd be surprised. Man, man slides into girl peeing at V Festival 2012. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was got promise. Last night in bed, actually. Oh my, yeah, she's peeing on the ground and he mud slides straight under her. <laughs> Send, send me mudslide mudslide p. I want to watch that on my own. <laughs> Look up Mag Smrodu. Okay, last one though before doing this encounter. Actually, last one. All right, everybody's ready except for Charles. I think because he's looking up a video. <gasps> oh, the filth wizard. Yes, wait, that's it. It's in a different language. That's why we couldn't find it. I got everything right except for his cloak. It's not a great. Put it in the uh, raid group so everybody it, yeah. can join in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, let me drop that in there. Just, you're gonna have one message in this Discord, and it's that. <laughs> yeah, it's just filth wizard. Here, uh, let me make sure it's not toss, and I'll pull it up on stream. I don't think it is. In fact, it's actually not even a wizard at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's just a man it's with a just... stick. <laughs> but they called him. This if, was so misleading. Come if you, on. It's if, not you, a if you, <laughs> if you go into the comments, I promise you, they're calling him Filth Wizard. They're all talking in German. <laughs> <laughs> Holy that wall of noise! This is. He actually only has a stick. <laughs> Why did you? Wait, he's just drinking the video. mud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's not playing with the mud. He's drinking it. That's why I got confused. Wires got crossed. But yeah. The, this is- they called somebody him- somebody find this? I don't know, they called him the Filth Wizard, though. I swear to God, they called him the Filth Wizard. Look at that good Samaritan coming up and saying, Hey man, stop drinking that yeah. fucking water. <laughs> yeah. oh, when I what translate Mag Smrodu, it translates to Stink Mage. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> all right, oh, all right, Jesus, all right. All right. Let's start, let's start, let's yeah, staff just posted it. The stink mage replenishes mana in the tainted moon. Room. <laughs> 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 better, better. Let's yeah, get serious. The, the stink mage and his mana potion. <laughs> the tainted moon. <laughs> I told you that video is such a bad lust. Last week I watched the police chase on YouTube that I was convinced was the slowest in the history of law enforcement. They were chasing a Tahoe that was driving under the speed limit using their turn signal. And it was honestly just like a really polite chase, if you can even call it that. It was more like a, like a motor ca cavalcade. And I thought to myself, golly, this is what it's all about. You know, this is speed. It doesn't get better than this. The intensity was off the charts. The adrenaline was pumping throughout my body just watching it. I can only imagine the rush of the officers as well as the, the woman driving the Tahoe. And I just didn't think it could go slower. Until today. I watched the video where the police chased down an Amish buggy. And it's, a, it's, it's as thrilling as it sounds. Body cam shows police in low speed chase of drunk Amish guy driving horse and buggy. <laughs> that goddamn menace. Okay. Just when you thought it was safe to go back on the road, now you gotta look both ways just in case old Abraham comes around in the horse and buggy. And he's been drinking. Whoa! Hey! Hey, hey! Hey, you put that in park! Wake up! Good lord! <laughs> There's a Bud Light can sitting in there and he's playing out. <laughs> He'll go home. The horse knows how to get home. I will to see if I can get in front of him and slow down. Well, you're gonna scare the horse if you do that. What is that plan? You better hope this guy hasn't tricked out that buggy with nitrous oxide boosters. I have it stopped. Nope. Oh boy! Oh, now look what you've done! Disregard. He just rammed it into my car. Did you wait! You knew he was asleep and you parked in front of him! What do you mean? Yeah, this guy just got Amish pit maneuvered here. This is entirely the officer's fault. He even said the guy is slumped over out and then he still slabs up in the middle of his, like, path. 
Hey! Stop your horse! What? <laughs> stop your horse! What? Yo, let me just put it in the park real quick. Stop your horse! Put it in the Get your horse! What do you want me to do? <laughs> he doesn't even know where he is right now. Man, just peel out of there. The cops will never catch you. The old fashioned wild western chase here. Okay, grab the horse, Wood. Arrest that horse as well. Two, four, three. Repeating Victor Adam. Let's breathalyze it. Might be drunk. I got around him and had him stopped. No, what are you talking about? In the road. And then when I got out, he went to go around me and just rammed it right to. And he got busted his head. No, I don't think that's what happened at all. What? P pardon? What in tarnation? I, this guy was asleep. <laughs> I don't think he made like a conscious decision to go around. I think the horse itself panicked because of your lights pulling up out of nowhere in the middle of the night and the horse tried to get around you. Not the driver coming up with a conscious decision to try and drift around you. But let's, let's watch it back. May maybe I missed something. Might have it stopped. Nope. <laughs> Disregard. It's like stopping Santa's sleigh. Like, you just put a roadblock in front of the reindeer. It's your fault. And even here you said we might have it stopped. And then afterwards you're saying I had it stopped. Which you didn't. You never, you never had me. You never had your car. As Dominic Toretto said. Granny shifting not double clutching like you should. <clears throat> And he stopped in the road, yeah. and then when I got out... Type of cop to put down to some road spike traps to right stop it. <laughs> and he's got busted his head. Yeah, get the spike tarp out. <laughs> I don't know. And I started walking around the corner of the car to grab the reins. And that's when what? he took off. What are you doing? I, I watched your body cam. <laughs> what? Every time you get beside of him, he'd freaking speed up. It's an animal! You scared it. The dude was asleep. He out. You said so yourself. This man just made up his own fanfic on camera. Check the comments. No way the comments aren't calling that out. I love that the horse knows exactly where it's going like a self-driving Tesla. <laughs> the comments are kind of slapping. He fell asleep in the wagon, horse left for home, he technically wasn't driving, the horse was on autopilot. <laughs> Don't see what's wrong, drunk guy has a designated <laughs> driver. He's in an Amish Uber. Oh, here, yeah, now the, now the comment's calling it out. Anyone else no, catch the cop changing the story, yeah. Yeah, this was, this was pretty interesting. This was a, some of the worst police work of all time. Last night, some deviously clever thieves hatched a genius idea on how to steal an ATM machine using a forklift. This isn't the first of its kind, and it certainly won't be the last. In fact, it's a pretty popular genre of content online with surveillance cameras capturing goofy ATM heists, and it's always a whole team of clowns that show up to the party, and somehow none of them had any neuron activation to plan beforehand because it almost never goes right. It seems like ATM robberies are done exclusively by people that can't tie their own shoes, but then also somehow have access to the wackiest vehicles ever. Like, last night it was a forklift, there was one a couple years ago where they came up with an excavator, actual heavy machinery, an excavator they used to carve the ATM out of a building, pick it up in its bucket and dump into a goddamn van. Like, I don't even know where they're getting it from. It's like they're playing GTA Online in real life. But yeah, it's always just so interesting. So I want to show you a few of them. We'll start with last night's forklift heist. This happened in Sacramento, and it's like something out of a Spongebob episode with every villain is lemons here. So, there's only a couple of chess pieces on the board here. We have the white pickup truck on the top and the forklift on the left. Now, pay close attention to that forklift operator, because he may be out here committing a crime, but he said, God damn it, I'm not violating OSHA regulations. Robbery is one thing, but violating OSHA regulations, that's an unforgivable sin, and I will have no part in that, thank you very much. So that gentleman's in the proper forklift attire, complete with even the hard hat, and then he just fires this into turbo drive. He engaged the NOS boosters and just gave a big wallop to the ATM, knocking it off of the, the pedestal there. And uh, then he begins the second part of this incredible scheme that they've hatched. 
The truck driver throws that in reverse to get in the proper position to receive the ATM, and then the forklift driver comes over here and just skewers it. He starts pumping it a little bit, hoping to get the tongs on the actual ATM unit itself and not just the outer casing. It's like an egg, and then the orange stuff is the shell, and what he wants to get to is the yolk in the middle. So, with the delicate hands of a surgeon, he gets underneath it and cradles it like a baby. So, mission accomplished so far, he's got the ATM on the forklift, and now it's just the last little piece of the puzzle, and he, he blows it. Yeah, he blows it. A bit of a fumble there, miscalculation, could have happened to anyone. And, as you can see, it's happening to the best of us. Now, all of a sudden, there's a spectator in the stands. Another car swoops in here, a variable they couldn't have accounted for, and this had to be the most shocking moment of that driver's life. What started as just a normal trip to the ATM ended up with him getting caught in an idiot sandwich, so he says, you know what, I'm not hungry, I'm going home. And just when you thought this game was over, sports fans, wait until the fourth quarter, because look at this comeback. A perfect exchange from forklift to truck bed. Dominic Toretto puts pedal to the metal and drives off. No need to fasten or secure the ATM in the truck bed. It's not going to fall off. They're operating off hopes and dreams. And when has that ever not been enough? According to news reports, the ATM fell off a few miles up the road and ended up causing a car accident. So I can only pray that whoever was involved in that accident is okay. Just, uh, who could have seen that coming? Into the bed of the truck, only for it to fall off in the middle of the street, causing a traffic accident. No one could have accurately predicted that that would happen. Just truly a freak accident somehow, that ATM falling off the truck. But uh, I, I don't want to just talk about just this one ATM heist, because there's so many that are just as wacky and goofy, so I want to show you a few of them. But before doing that, I want to show you something that is far more valuable than an ATM machine. It's Godslap. Issue 4 of Godslap, to be precise. It just dropped today. Issue 4 of Godslap is here. This is the standard cover, as well as, as always, two beautiful variant covers. And the story is really, really getting good, so you don't want to miss it. Godslap Issue 4 is available right now at badegg.co. And if you don't want a physical copy of Godslap, there is a digital download as well. So definitely make sure to check that out. It's our comic series we've been working on for a few years now, and we're really starting to get in our stride. We're, we're entering the golden age of Godslap, baby. I know I've already shown this clip before, but since I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, I figured there's no time like the present to once again put it in the top of everyone's mind. This is the infamous excavator ATM heist here. So this is a stolen excavator, and they really gave it a workout. You can see him going fishing here for the ATM, just really digging in there like someone trying to get the last bit of toothpaste out of the tube. Finally gets the ATM in the bucket, and here's his good friends here, the foot ninjas from the Ninja Turtles. That man up front is striking a power stance like actual NPC energy. And then he gets it and just puts it in the open sunroof of the van. And let me tell you, perfect calculations because it fits like a glove. Look at that. Putting the square into the square hole just the way we used to do it when we were kids. Jackpot. Now, it may not have, you know, fit as perfectly as they maybe drew it up in the playbook, which is why they give it a give it a couple of little slaps to try and get it down a bit deeper, but at the end of the day, it was good enough, so they were satisfied with the job well done and, and drove away. The footage is shocking. A pickup truck smashes into a grocery store, but this driver isn't done. He goes on the other side and zooms straight through. When I first saw that clip, I actually laughed out loud very hard, which isn't normal for me from a YouTube video. I just couldn't even wrap my head around the thought process of the driver. Like, he accomplished the goal on the first try here. He got a strike down the bowling alley. He backed his truck up into the store through the doors the first time. So why did he pull out and do it again just for a bigger explosion? Like, I, on the other side, it accomplished nothing. He had already done what he set out to do with getting his truck inside. I, I don't exactly know why he did that. That was absolutely a few. This, this became personal. It went from an ATM robbery to a statement real quick. Why is this happening? Because crooks are after the ATM machine. They load it in the truck and they're off. Now, this one doesn't use any fancy schmancy machinery here like a forklift or an excavator. Just good old-fashioned spit and elbow grease. Just two dudes being men, picking up an ATM and putting it in their truck and driving away. No need for elaborate planning, no need for even a single thought to enter your brain for this one. Just, I want ATM. I drive truck through and pick up ATM. Okay. 
actual caveman brain <laughs> idea. With the use of brute force, brazen ATM thefts are happening all over the country. This whole video from Inside Edition is mainly a montage of wacky ATM thefts, and you can see that they brought out a timeless strategy here with, once again, the forklift, but this one's got a little pizzazz to it. They're hitting us with a razzle-dazzle. So they're doing like a little balancing act where they're just like, they got a fingernail on the ATM machine with the forklift tongue, and he's just like, uh, like kind of balancing it on the way out and like holding it back and driving away slowly. It, it's like something out of the circus. It's actually very impressive. There's real talent behind the wheel of that forklift. This isn't something that anybody could just get up and do. There is a real for their work here. And dare I say it, they even seem a bit considerate. They, they said, you know what, I want the money from the ATM but I don't want to cause too much damage in the process. So I'm just going to real tenderly pick it up, balance it, and just get away with it. I don't, I don't want to hit any walls or anything. He didn't come in here and just start slapping it around like the last guy in the forklift video we saw from last night. This guy came in here with a real delicate touch. Or at least that's what the video showed. Maybe right after this brief clip, the guy just goes ballistic and starts just like speeding the forklift into everything he can find, maybe. In Chicago, a crook wraps a rope around the ATM and gives the signal. A truck then hauls the machine through the front door, even injuring his partner. That one's probably my favorite. Just a beautiful blunder, really. Wraps the, the cord around the forklift and then he's like, all right, punch it and then he just gets absolutely blasted by the atm he didn't stop to think for just one second how the world works with physics and that by standing at the doorway where the rope was leading out that the atm would follow that trail so he just stands right in between a bullet and a target here and takes a hit to the leg from the atm it just comes through like a cannonball and annihilates him. His need got busted up in a big way. It reminds me of a tweet I read like a month ago where a guy took a bad step at a baseball game and he like blew out both of his knees. The tweet said, this man just blew his ACL, MCL, DVD, and NBC. And that's how I feel about this clip right here. That ATM absolutely left his knee, I think. Now, I don't think it broke his leg because it seems like he was able to like kind of limp away, but that's no doubt just all the adrenaline that kicked in to, you know, not get caught here. But yeah, I just, I think that clip is by far the best one so far from these ATM heists. So yeah, I just wanted to share a few of these with you since the forklift one just happened last night and uh, that's really about it. So yeah. Police chasing vehicle in Pasadena. This is only five minutes. This is a 37 mile per hour chase. That they are driving through. This isn't even a this chase. Is a very dangerous this is just two people going in the same they direction in a commute home from work. These officers are tracking this individual. Oh, it's in live. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I forgot there's a different section for this now. Just on Altadena Drive. A lot of tree coverage here. Suspect. This, this is the wrong one up. again? You know, How many police chases happened today? Holy, look at the amount of police cars in this one. What is that wanted level? on if they Jesus do. Christ yeah and you look at those from going any farther LA's so turned into GTA bit, uh, bro these police chases are so common area, now right, right in that area there it is actually nuts I wonder if it was always like that this hour. there he goes again okay <laughs> it looks like a male driving and he's picking up speed now this is the quickest we've seen him <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the slowest acceleration of all time what is that, 0 to 60 in 5 minutes? Communicate with them and he's like, oh, well, I, I'm just gonna... There he goes again. I'll just... Okay. I'll give it a try. It's like a male there driving, and he's picking up speed now. This is the quickest we've seen him since that standoff first started. And this is close to the 60. There's a <gasps> deputy vehicle there holding off traffic. You wonder if... What? what? <laughs> what in tarnation? Easy to yeah. set it up in but this now, scenario. This is a pursuit again, everybody. You're watching it live here on Fox 11. The, the, this is... <laughs> They have the whole department here. Whoa, wait, what? They had they have to be doing this for like farming ad revenue off YouTube. How? There's like 80 police officers here. They even come up to the window. But they're done with this. The LA County Sheriff's Department is going. It looks how to how does he get out of this? Sort of device that looks like a spike strip. They're staring at him. The back vehicles and there they go. And then he stops again. <laughs> okay. Cat and mouse continues. Mental stability, yes. There's so many officers. They just, he slowly just gets away. And, uh, and they won't give up. Still the it's like the turn. turtle in the hair, I guess. Cell phone, something. 
There he goes again. Okay. It looks like a male there. Drove bye bye. He's picking up speed now. This is the quickest. He's still at the speed limit. That standoff first started. This isn't high speed and yet. This is close to the 60. There's the deputy vehicle there. Fox 11. Unclear of the. Bang. Water. Threading the needle. See. Right through there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on. You can see a night sun there, so that obviously Jesus is Christ. Helicopter there. Literally this is one of the goofier ones. They had this guy vehicle. like Let's see how the kaput. Looks the other okay, there's no way he gets again. away again. Again, stopping mm -hmm. randomly in an intersection here. Well, and, and it's well, it looks like he does somehow get get out. In the back. We've seen situations where trunks have opened. He's literally like filming a TikTok right now. Uh, yeah. be in the back of it and they had yeah. the, on again here we go he, he, okay where does he just decide to slow down sometimes and then yeah. wait yeah. And let's see what how much control this driver That's, has uh and i think the officers were just bored they just wanted something to do perimeter. there's the 60 but you, yeah you can just keep going That's wilcox uh, avenue there this is better than uh, what we were doing at the uh, office this, anyway this, this driver's and so let's see okay. what happened. that was a weird one so which one were you talking about if that wasn't the one where the guy gets away Hi, the helicopter above is mm, the good move. helicopter making the calls, keeping an eye on where this vehicle is. Now he's going to ramp it off of a parked tow truck. Vehicle, and they really believe Never that to be seen again. The way, these, uh, the way these persons are driving, and you see what we're Man, he is really pumping Those down this street. Is a, My a God. Very residential area, high speeds. What, what's happening to the, the sportscaster here? What was that? Indigestion? Possible that vehicle is still under the or off for the Oh, he actually did the uh, movie stunt of going back to the really and trying busy. to escape. Uh, surprisingly, Ventura doesn't look as home or another place to get out of the vehicle. Sorry for the spoiler. The vehicle, it's much safer mm. if he can get out of the vehicle, then they can at least take him into custody. Okay, now we're getting off at Lancashire Boulevard. This is in Universal City. Uh, this Ooh. is Ooh. on the other side. This is on the north side of the pass. But now he is heading. Um, that looks like southbound on Lancashire. Yeah, there's a gas station right there. This is uh, this is now in Studio City, Amy. Should be Ventura Boulevard, and again, you. That guy's using a turn signal. It's definitely not him. Has, uh, Nevada place. We don't know oh, did he turn around? Oh my God, there's so many options. There's going to be a lot of congestion uh -oh. in the area here. And as we've been talking, you know, a lot of the people... This guy's driving like it could be this guy. They're off work. And uh, this is certainly... Wait, no, it's pro it is actually that probably that guy. Really busy. Uh, surprisingly... No, not, probably not this one. The other one. As packed as it often is. Oh, time with the what happened? How did... Wait, what? What just happened in there? Like four black cars all came out of there, and they all looked like the the same make and model of the car. Wait, what the was that? Was this was this rehearsed? Did he call in reinforcements? Like boys, I need five five black Camrys parked under this stat. I need to blend in like Creed. Mirage Alt Chinchuru. <laughs> uh, this okay, so that's definitely him. And then here, what what are the odds? Look at this. So this is not him, but it's the, like the exact same car. Okay, interesting. The north side of the pass, but now he is heading, um, that looks like southbound on Lancashire. Yeah, there's a gas station right there. Another this one? Is, uh, this is now in Studio City, Amy. Oh, this man. Boulevard, and again, you were mentioning, Mark, that these... He just got a crazy lucky break in there. Nevada place. We don't know if this person is right now. I really think it's this guy, though. Work and, uh, the guy grinding the line there, debating on whether or not to make some crazy busy. moves. Uh, I really think that was the I think that was your boy. As packed as it often PD units coming up off the Damn, holy wait, he actually did just escape. Is still under the, but Sky 2 did it's not under the other pass, I'll tell you right now. Or under the other. vehicles come out the other side of Oh yeah, he, he's definitely like he's definitely they, they got the plates, I'm sure. But this was a what a what a stunt here to escape. Let me see. You can at least take him into custody. Okay, is there anything like identifiable here? Boulevard. This is in Universal City. Uh, and again, it's definitely not him using that turn signal. Zero percent chance. Has, uh, Nevada place. We don't. It could be this guy. Well, no, actually, I don't think so. That doesn't seem to be a Honda. Know if this person is familiar with the area, but there's going to be a lot of congestion in the area. I just really think it's this guy because he comes out all like cattywampus. Like he comes out dazed. Work and. Uh, this Someone in chat had an interesting idea that might be true. He could have gone under here and then cranked a U-turn and then just came out this way, driving totally natural. Which I think is possible. This certainly, this he is Let me see him go in one more time. Hold this driver to closer, but this, uh, yeah, they it's, it's definitely got the silver trim. Closer, but LAPD so it wasn't that guy, I was wrong. He is doing that tactic where they're trying to get this. Should be Ventura Boulevard and again. No, it doesn't look like he has the silver trim. These. 
This car has uh, Nevada plates. We don't know if this person is familiar with the area, but there's going to be a lot of congestion in the area here. He also had lighter and rooms. Oh, did he even look at that? A lot of the people out right now. Not this guy. They're off work, and uh, this is certainly well, uh, surprisingly Ventura doesn't. Oh, wait, 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 wait! It's this guy. Wait, this is absolutely it. Wait, this is him. It was the third guy that came out. Yeah, it's definitely the third guy. This is the same car. Cause, yeah, silver trim. And it even has the lighter stuff you mentioned. No blue on the plate? Did it have blue on the plate going into it? Oh my god, what the- <laughs> Jesus! How many cars- How many of these Hondas were under that over- Under these- Jesus! And yeah, you're right, that's not the same guy. It doesn't have the blue on the plate. How the f is that possible? Yeah, man went under there and hit the shadow clone jutsu. Wow. So many of I do think what probably area. did happen is he went under here, did that U-turn, and then came out, like, driving natural. And that would also explain why this car comes out, like, all up. Because he maybe, like, swerved to get out of the other guy's way, so now he's all, like, discombobulated. So, like, right here, he's probably in here with that U-turn now going this way, and he just poops out that way. They were able to get out of their black car and get into a white Jeep. Right now, we don't know if that driver had someone working with them and picked them up or well, if yeah. this was a carjacking. We are still waiting on word from officers exactly how the person who was leading them on a pursuit was able to. That is so big brain. 100% what must have happened is he made a call while on the interstate. So he kind of phoned it in on the interstate and was like, Okay, look, I'm gonna need you to meet me under the- at this spot. I'm coming in hot. Like, this is actually some out of the Italian job movie. Or I guess it's possible that he ditched the car and then stole another one GTA style. Either one is likely. This is accurate, though I don't know why they'd lie about him ditching the car. Though I guess what- here's another one. I'm gonna- I'm throwing out all possible options. What could have happened is since none of the ground units saw that happen. I'm imagining they're relying on witness testimonies from like pedestrians in the area. Maybe one of them was in on it and they're like, oh yeah, 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 that guy in that black car that was driving recklessly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he got out into a, a clown car, a, a purple clown car. Oh, and they went uh, southbound. Like it could have just been a lie from the start. Damn, this is, a, this is actually a pretty wild one. This has so many like, possible explanations this was seven hours ago did they ever catch him i'm imagining not i mean the car was stolen so the plates are kind of worthless would be my guess go look for the jeep in the original stream okay let's see all right there's this i don't think this is a white jeep pulling in though. this is coming out and i don't even think that's a jeep is that a jeep i can't tell it's blurry it's just like all, like every goddamn car design is like exactly the same nowadays. They're all so uniform. It's so hard to distinguish different makes and models now. That could be anything. That could be a Kia. Like, I mean, that could be literally anything. They hopped in the invisible boat mobile. That would be huge. <laughs> Can you imagine? They go into the, the outside is the paddy wagon. <laughs> oh man. That'd be a- that'd be a hype chase. They'd probably just, like, give up on the pursuit right then and there. I feel like he saw his chance and took it. Yeah, he must have. I- I think what's very possible is, like, he- he pulled in- in the- ditched the car and then stole a, a, another car. Because there was two of them. Like, they probably just, like, rushed another car and took it. Like, I don't think they would have been able to plan it that quickly. Like, that would be crazy if they somehow planned it that far in advance. He also had a, yeah, plus he had a, he absolutely could have just rushed a car and stolen it. There'd be a lot more commotion, there'd be a lot more commotion if he stole one. Oh, true, yeah, then the victim of the carjacking would have absolutely just reported it to the police that were not too far behind. That's a really good point. Unless he was just like, oh man, my car got stolen. I guess I'll just walk home.
I recently watched a video from a channel called Crime Zone, which put together this beautiful piece on one of the most interesting criminals I've ever heard of. It just seems like something more out of a cartoon than reality, like the real world Dirty Dan here. I'll quickly hit you with a 30 second Shark Tank pitch to get you interested and tell you why you should care. Basically, an army veteran uses his to target McDonald's locations for robbery, and his specialty was busting in through the rooftop. So he would bring tools, cut through the roof, and drop in like an angel on the employees. And he had the manners of an angel too. He'd let them get their coats. They all said that he was really nice and asked them to just wait in like the, the ice locker, the, the freezer, and he'd rob them and leave. And he did this for quite some time before being apprehended. Spoilers, he gets caught. But, he doesn't spend too long in jail because he hatched a galaxy brain scheme to break out which he executed flawlessly, becoming the first prisoner at that facility to ever break out successfully. And, he turns back to a life of crime, but no longer going to the Ronald McDonald Playhouse of Pain. Instead, he transitions to living in a Toys R Us and gradually stealing their toys. So what he does is, he lives in a Toys R Us by living behind a bike rack. He carves out his own little, like, hidden man cave in the walls. I won't spoil how it all ends or anything like that, but I just I just wanted to get, like, the cliff notes out here because I just find it so wild. I'll put a link to the original video in the description, of course, so you can watch the entire thing, but I'll show you some clips from when we watched it. All right, let's start with... Let's see Roof Man. This sounds kind of interesting. I do love criminals that hide hey everyone, in attics and shit. Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to Crime Zone. Unbeknownst Quick to question, is there still a breakfast rush for McDonald's? I remember when I was a kid, that was the sh But I feel like McDonald's has just such steep competition these days for the breakfast slot. Do we have any other, like, do we have any, like, big McDonald's breakfast enthusiasts here? Because near me, it's kind of just like... No one cares anymore. Overwhelmingly, yes. Wow. I just think the McDonald's breakfast has really fallen off. It's like Netflix stock, but for food. Once he had the cash, the masked robber walked all of the employees into the cooler where they were locked inside. It seems kind of nice. not before they were asked if they wanted to grab their coats to stay warm oh. while they waited for help to arrive. After they have that, a police sketch and it's just a hamburglar. Fled. While the oh, employees that's not the hamburglar. Know it at the time. I saw a video of two women stealing everyone's food inside a restaurant. Don't remember where though. Uh, probably McDonald's. Uh, actually, I take that back. Probably Waffle House. Waffle House is a restaurant you go to and you're just looking for fights and maybe, like, a waffle or two. I think it's a Prime Sun City. So this is basically the only fast food specialized robber is what I'm getting. While little is known about why Don. Jeffrey Allen Manchester chose to turn to a life of crime, what we do well, know the better question is, is why that turn to a life of crime a for fast robber food? known as Roof Man, he lived what appeared to be a normal life to put his military training to a different kind of use. In November of 1998... Do you really need military training to rob a McDonald's? I feel like you could just go in and be like, I just want the money in the register and, and like, make like a finger in your jacket and be like, yeah, just take it. Like, I don't think you really needed all like the special ops training just to become like a filet fish fondler felon. Damn, that would have been better instead of fondler. It doesn't even make sense. But man, this guy, those McDonald's employees, they, they didn't know who they were with when he busted through their ceiling. One second, they're just serving up a quarter pounder. Next second, they got goddamn Jason Bourne coming through the top turnbuckle. That's While cute. the bulk of Manchester's robberies were committed in California, he would eventually hit McDonald's locations in Nevada, Oregon, Minnesota, Maryland, Virginia, and both of the Carolinas, making off with an estimated $100,000. Manchester would use tools to cut a hole in the roof of the location, dropping down anywhere what? from 10 to 15 feet. So what, I still am super confused on why the roof. What tactical advantage does he get from busting in right here behind the counter as opposed to just rushing through here and jumping over the counter? Just like the element of surprise? No alarm? I guess, but there's still employees there either way, right? Because, like they said, he was always really nice to the employees and telling them to get to the back end, so there's still people there. So at that point, the alarm's kind of worthless, wouldn't you think? When they caught up to him a short time later, 
He was still carrying his rifle, as well as a nylon bag containing drills, pry tools, hammers, and all of the cash he had stolen from the two McDonald's locations. True to his reputation, Manchester didn't put up a fight when cornered by officers, instead telling them, quote, You guys did a really good job today. Oh, With Manchester's arrest oh, what a came a sweetheart. flurry of news articles announcing he was ultimately sentenced to 45 years in prison oh. on charges ranging from robbery Fuck. with a dangerous weapon to kidnapping. Little did anyone know that his story was far from over. Really? He busted a hole out of the Following prison cell? his conviction at the end of 2000, Went Jeffrey Manchester was sent on the afternoon of June 15th, 2004. Now the roof Jeffrey man Manchester put his plan into action and escaped from the Brown Creek Correctional Institution, making him the first person to do so in the facility's 11-year history. Oh, yeah, that's pretty Once good. Again, well, 11 years isn't man. super long. That's free. Good. It was here, at a retail plaza, that he would set up a living space that would baffle and amuse both the public and law he, enforcement officials Oh my officials god, he opened his own McDonald's. A franchise owner. Home, the roof man chose a Toys R Us store <laughs> located in a complex called the Triangle Shopping Center nice. just off of Monroe Road. He raced remote control <laughs> cars on the roof in the middle of the night, rode bikes around the store for exercise, and managed to get most of the nourishment that he needed by stealing and eating baby food. Toys R Us, no, wait, That's Toys R Us had all kinds of snacks. He didn't need baby food. I remember back in the heyday at Toys R Us, you could get like pounds of Doritos and my man's over there just eating, like, meat sticks and apple mush when he could have been feasting on Doritos and Oreos. This man just said, I want the Gerbers. Thanks for some dreadnought in the prime elbow. This actually seems like something out of Codename Kids Next Door. Like, one of the villains infiltrates a toy store that the kids are shopping at in order to torment them and scare them at night. Man's actually the boogeyman at the Jeffrey's Play Palace here. I have looked literally everywhere in the world for a single picture of this man's laboratory here. You know, Dexter's lab kind of, because the way it's described in the video and the way it's described by the authorities, it sounds incredible. He had baby monitor surveillance spy systems set up across the store to keep eyes on everyone, all the workers and all the uh, customers and everything. He had so many toys in a really elaborate setup with running water all in his like secret man cave in the Toys R Us walls. I want so badly to know what that actually looked like. I can't imagine a world where they didn't take pictures of it. They'd have to, right? Like it's evidence. So surely those pictures exist somewhere and I am begging any uh, authorities that were involved in this case to just release the photo evidence. I, let us see it. Let us, let us just take a gander. I have to know what his little secret lair looked like here in this Toys R Us because it must have been so cool. Or maybe it's overhyped and it was actually just like a really small like coffin of a couple of toys that he'd stay at. Who knows? But it just sounds so impressive and I would love to know what it looks like. But unfortunately, I can't find a single picture of it anywhere. I can't even find like a single like artistic interpretation of it from anyone from the scene. Nothing. But I know those pictures have to have existed, so I, I hope someday they surface. And when the holiday season rolled around, no one donated more to the congregation's toy drive than he did. Of course, these toys were actually all stolen from the store where the roof man was hey, hiding who's out. Gonna miss? who's gonna miss the toys though, huh? It was during this time that he realized he could tunnel directly through the store's wall into the adjacent unit which just so happened to be an abandoned circuit city. <laughs> this time, the Maybe this guy is responsible for Toys R Us and Circuit City going under. After they found out that this man was living in their walls for... It's been almost a year, I think, now. They just got so paranoid that the business started sinking. God damn. What a cool setup, though. That is like the most early 2000s imaginable. Like, that is your early 2000s shopping starting kit. Toys R Us, Circuit City, and Radio Shack. The only thing he's missing is a Blockbuster. And then he tunnels underground and goes right to Blockbuster or something. He also added more baby monitors to add to his makeshift surveillance system. Holy and even shit. installed a smoke detector and piped in water from the Toys R Us next what? door. What? Wait, how, report... how? How would nobody ever hear that? He piped in his own water line? How... Would he be able to successfully do that? 
It's not like it's not the hardest thing in the world to do that, I guess, if you tee off of an already existing line. But still, I feel like you'd absolutely hear that because you have to like drill into the walls and, and you have to tee off that pipe. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, I guess just doing it like in the dead of night without anyone being around, you'd probably never notice. In order to continue to travel between the Toys R Us and the Circuit City as he pleased, Manchester left the tunnel between the two units intact. I bet so many Similarly kids saw him behind the, the bike rack and just got scared and didn't with say the anything. Walls on both sides. On December 26th, he decided it was time to pull off the big robbery that he had been planning. Unfortunately for the roof man, when he tried to pull off the crime, things did not go oh, according no. to plan. Similar to the Slipped 2000 on a banana robbery peel. in Belmont, when he held up the Toys R Us, employees were able to contact police sooner than he anticipated. Manchester responded by punching her, stealing Ooh. her, and running away. That's aggressive. Amazingly, he used to be so the nice. roof man seemed cornered, Circuit he managed City to escape them. through his trap doors undetected. It's unclear whether or not he returned to the hideout within the Circuit City, identified him as the man who had been going by the name John Zorin, and were shocked to discover who he really was. In a bid to cover his tracks, Manchester burned down a dentist office where he had gotten his teeth fixed while on the run. Well, uh, how does that... He worried that police would be able to find his dental records there. Okay. This had the opposite effect of what he Man, intended. prison really changed and only them. made investigators more suspicious. Manchester showed up, believing he would be able to see his girlfriend one last time before continuing his life on the run. He arrived with flowers, but was arrested by waiting officers before he could make it inside the apartment. Manchester is currently incarcerated <laughs> escape again. at the central prison the in roof Raleigh, not done. where his projected release date is December 4th, 2036. Do you know of any other cases like this that God, you think we should check out? What a cool story. Tell us about them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. That prison is five minutes from my house. Bro, you might want to move just in case the roof man gets out. He'll start living in your walls. Sleep in fear, man. Sleep in fear. I don't know if it's movies or Grand Theft Auto 5 that's rotted my brain, but when I think of bank robberies, I always picture some absolutely event that's thoroughly planned and it's a huge deal. Like when I hear, oh, bank got robbed, I'm expecting the follow-up sentence to be, and then Spider-Man stopped the robbers. I've just always imagined bank robberies like it's straight out of a cartoon, you know, high-tech security, damn near impossible to pull off successfully. You know, you see like an Ocean's Eleven movie, you're like, wow, that's no one's ever going to be able to actually rob a bank like this, huh? They've just always made it sound so wild, saying things like, all right, we're going to need a 20-person team in order to pull this one off successfully, boys. The target is a 15-inch thick steel titanium concrete vault door that's protected by a retina scanner and biological deposit box for fingernail clippings, and it'll only accept it from the head honcho of the bank. You also have to sing the fast part to Eminem's Rap God, and if you up a single lyric, the alarm sounds and the FBI is swarming within 30 seconds. It's also protected by a moat with 45 crocodiles inside and 24-7 security, and they're all ex-Navy SEALs. We're going to have to be in and out within five seconds. The job is simple. You know, like, in my tiny reptile brain, here's all this, and I'm like, wow. Well, no one's ever going to be able to actually rob a bank, huh? But for some reason, I've just been under the... That banks in the real world have similar security protocol. Obviously, not with, like, all the sci-fi security protocols, like infrared laser beams everywhere that you have to dodge. Uh, I've just been under the... That they're highly protected, and robbing them is still extremely difficult. But in reality, that's just not the case. Bank robberies happen all the time and they are nothing like they are in the movies. I want to show you a recent bank robbery that happened in Orlando. This is about a week old. You you have to see this to believe it. Yeah, that's right. Your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. The alleged bank robber is Mr. Incredible himself. This dude threw on the Incredibles t-shirt, popped on the shades and said, it's showtime. And this was a successful robbery, by the way. I'll explain his method in just a moment, but here's the security camera footage showcasing the culprit. And he got away with it for now. He wasn't caught. He's still at large. So if you do recognize that man, make sure to call that Crime Stoppers hotline. Now you're probably scratching your head wondering to yourself, where was the robbery? Charles, you forgot to show the climax. You didn't show where he actually robbed them. But you're wrong. You just witnessed the robbery. That was the entire operation. The extent of his plan was to go into the bank and ask for the money. So he demanded money from the teller and they gave it to him and he walked out. 
That's how that bank robbery went. He didn't flash any weapons. I haven't read any reports about him making threatening remarks or anything like that. They just explained that he demanded money from the teller which he received and then fled the scene. Now the use of the word demanding in the reports leaves a lot of wiggle room for what could have been said or done from the guy to get the money. You know, maybe he went in there and was threatening the employees or seemed to just be like this menace. Maybe he treated it like a Call of Duty Xbox Live lobby and got real loud vocal screaming this and that. And I have always said it's never worth risking your life for the business you work at, you know? If someone comes in there and they're saying, you know, empty the register, you're gonna get it, bub, it's best just to comply. What's the point in risking life and limb for the business you work at? It's just, it's simply not worth it, plus insurance covers all of it for the business anyway, so it's just, you really shouldn't be, like, willing to for your job, I would say. So I have no ill will towards the teller here who did give this, this guy the money. I just find it super interesting that this is the technique that was used for a successful bank robbery. Just going up and asking for the money. It doesn't seem like he did anything beyond that. His plan was as simple as it gets. Can I have some more of that cash? In fact, I'm not asking. Give me more of that cash. And they did. So I decided to look into it a bit. And it turns out all bank tellers are instructed to always follow the thief's instructions no matter the case, whether a weapon is produced or not. If there is a thief there demanding money, it is the bank teller's responsibility to follow it. They are instructed to follow along no matter what because it, their safety is of paramount importance. So that caught me by surprise because I wasn't sure. I, I, I knew bank tellers always had to go along with like someone who shows a weapon or something. Like They're not going to try and you know, make a make a holdout and you know, challenge them to a fist fight in order to disarm them or anything. I just thought, like, they had to produce, like, a weapon or some kind of threat or, like, reasonable uh, showcase that they're going to cause a problem. I didn't realize that if they even just hinted at wanting to rob them, that they had to follow along. So that was a little surprising to me, but it makes complete sense, and I completely agree with that ruling as well. Uh, however, I still think this guy's planning is lackluster, to say the least. He didn't even make an attempt to conceal his face. The closest thing he has to a disguise is just some he picked up at the gas station, probably on the way to the bank. Now, I don't want to undersell the importance of his wardrobe pick for the day. I think the Incredibles shirt really sealed the deal. There's a good chance this crashes and burns if he's wearing just like a normal Abercrombie and Fitch shirt or something, but he threw on the Incredibles shirt. That right there adds like a plus 10 to intimidation. They didn't know who they were with and they weren't taking any chances. So he got away with it for now. He's managed to elude authorities as I understand it. So overall, just like a really goofy, wild story that I happened to stumble across today and just wanted to share with all of you. Uh, this is not at all how I imagined bank robberies going in the real world. I very rarely have ever read about any in the real world aside from like the big ones where there's getaway cars. Uh, like police chases, shootouts, you know, I haven't heard of any like this, so I just found it to be pretty interesting. That's about it. See so, ya. Yeah. Every time you see a robbery in a movie or something, it's always super impressive. They'll have like these incredibly well laid out plans, full blown Ocean's Eleven type, where they have like a getaway driver, 15 aerospace engineers on standby just in case they need them. They'll have like Jimmy Neutron in the lab cook up some crazy device to break into the big vault for millions of dollars. And it just always seems like, damn, you have to be a galaxy brain, 10 digit IQ mastermind in order to be a professional criminal. But then when you watch like a heist or a robbery in the real world, it's nothing like the movies most of the time. The plans are laid out in crayon three seconds before executing them. They're not looking at building blueprints. They turn their brain off and just go from wacky. They get insano style. So, like, they'll just run in there, like, grab, like, five things and then just, like, shuffle out the door and that's the extent of it. And then they get caught five minutes later. And today I saw a robbery that I think is probably one of the worst ones ever recorded. It is just, I feel bad for the guy. Like, watching him rob it is agonizing because it's so incredibly slow. This dude robbed a Little Caesars in like negative five times speed. I felt like I was watching an NFL replay while watching this man try and rob the cash register. They filmed him for over a minute and 30 seconds. He just sat there trying to rob them. Oh, 
At first glance, I thought this was pay money Wubby robbing the place, and I thought to myself, God damn, he is really doing everything he can to get to the bottom of his turd kebab mystery. But then I realized that this is just like a generic default character in GTA Online. This was just like a preset. This guy is coming in here, not even trying to disguise himself. Like, he didn't even bother to cover his face. He put on, but they're too loose and they keep falling off. It's, it's a disaster. It's like robbery ASMR. He's not talking, the employees are just kind of making fun of him. It's just like they're they're roasting him. Like, it's just, it, no one's taking him seriously. It's so unbelievably goofy. And the thought process here to rob a Little Caesars, bro, the pizzas are $5. How much money do you possibly think you can get from the cash register? He was better off just taking the whole register and trying to sell that. He would have made more money that way. He's going through this whole song and dance prying open the cash register, but he probably would have made more money just standing outside making balloon animals for people that came into the Little Caesars. He would have got more in tips than he did out of this register. It is $5 pizzas. I don't know what he was expecting. He hasn't exactly hit Fort Knox here. It's Little Caesars. $5 pies. Like, I think he maybe got $20. Maybe. I absolutely love that response from the employees. No, I just work here. Like, I'm not going to risk my life. I'm not going to beat this man's ass and risk, you know, getting myself in trouble for the sake of saving $60 for Little Caesars. I don't care that much. I'm not paid to be like a Little Caesars gladiator and fight for Little Caesars honor. You know, that's the right way of handling things. Just the employees like, yeah, hey, right, you're robbing it. Okay, I'm not going to stop you. I'll just call the police, which they do. And then they just sit here and record all of it for evidence. And this man just keeps flashing the camera with his whole goddamn face. They did the absolute perfect thing here in this situation. This is where it gets so good. So this guy with all three brain cells and every neuron in that goddamn barren wasteland of a head starts firing and he's like, oh my god, I left my fingerprints at the scene. I, I, I know what happens next. I've watched CSI Miami. So he goes back in and tries to wipe down the register as if the fingerprints are the main concern here. Even though he's flashed his whole face with nose to the camera like eight times by now. And he's doing all of this in the slowest speed imaginable. He's entered cruise control. It's like, he, there's so much evidence here, and the one thing he's concerned about is fingerprints. So he goes in and tries to clean the scene. Very thorough job, too. But greed gets the best of him. He, he became gluttonous. So he goes in for more money, leaving more prints. We're next to, uh, we're next to Yeah, so he grabbed an extra like three dollars there and then tried to wipe down those extra prints but kept missing the areas that his greasy paws were touching and then just skedaddles in the slowest getaway of all time. Just barely walking. He would have been faster if he crawled away. Like Jesus Christ. All in all, I, I can't imagine he got more than 20 bucks. The guy in the video said 60, but I just, I don't believe that. There's no way he pulled $60 out of that register. All in all, he spent like a minute and a half emptying a register, struggling the entire way, looking super stupid just to walk away with less money than the register costs for repairs and risking jail time. If he had spent this long just collecting quarters from a wishing well, he would have made more money. That's all you're going to no, bro, you don't work here, bro. Don't get, don't get into nothing, bro. They ain't, they ain't uh, don't touch nothing. They don't ain't Yo, the store is shut down. The store is shut, the store, the store is shut down, bro. Yo. I've never seen a robbery where at the end of it, everyone's laughing at the robber. 
Like what? How shameful. How truly awful. The most miserable and slowest robbery ever recorded here. It's like a PSA. You know those like over the top PSAs where it's like you don't want to smoke a cigarette because you'll explode. And they just have like these crazy exaggerated cigarette smoking things. That's what happened here with this robbery. This this is how oh, watch out kids you don't want to rob look at look at how hard it is and he's like struggling with it for two minutes oh my god uh, there's no follow up I don't know if he got arrested there probably won't be a follow up since it's like a petty crime but I'm sure he didn't get away for long he was probably arrested in the parking lot because he probably just sat there I, I don't even think he even bothered to like get away. But you can also see that the customer that had come in while the guy was still robbing them was really contemplating if it was worth beating this guy's. He could have easily snapped him in half, I think. And then he even like, you know, wandered out the door a bit to contemplate further. But the employees are like, bro, it's just, it's really not worth it. And it wasn't, you know, he didn't need to beat his. This was far more than any beating could have been. So uh, hopefully that customer also did get like some pizza or something. And they all just laughed about it. What a remarkably robbery, and I just wanted to share this today because it put a smile on my face, so yeah, that's about it. See ya. You're about to see a robbery that's extremely nostalgic. It's a brand new robbery, but it elicits a feeling of nostalgia. It reminds me of the first Fast and Furious movie where they were stealing DVD players. These gentlemen are attempting to steal this TV off the wall, which I find super odd because no one really steals TVs anymore. They're very hard to move, they're less expensive than something smaller like an iPhone, and just really don't see a lot of TVs being stolen anymore. But these guys must be like thieves that time traveled from the early 90s to late 2019, and they're just confused by the scary future. But you know, they see TVs like they still got TVs. Yeah, boys are back in action, let's steal this, it's probably still worth it. Unfortunately, the security camera doesn't capture any sound, but if it did, you'd probably be hearing the Benny Hill theme being played over the loudspeaker, and this guy right here that's DJ turntabling the TV on the wall shouting for help. Luckily, there was a vigilante in the area hearing the cries, but I guess those windows must be cleanish because he thought that one was open instead of the broken one next to him, so he hits that like a dog trying to come inside by hitting the door. The cavalry arrives, and they get their third friend opening the trunk, which is just very overconfident thinking they're actually going to get this TV off here. And this must be just the slipperiest goddamn of all time. It's like they're on an ice skating rink. Now finally, after windmilling the TV for 30 seconds, they finally rip that off the wall and luckily break it immediately so they get nothing out of this. And they keep slipping and sliding all over the place. It's like there's butter on the bottom of their shoes. Then finally, the mastermind, the supervillain, the real muscle behind the operation hops in the driver's seat and peels out. They may have left empty-handed, but at least their pride is intact. Their spirits are probably still high, and I imagine they drove away looking for the nearest Radio Shack or Blockbuster to rob next. Let's go through this one more time and watch the slippery bandits in action again. I've mounted a few TVs in my day, but I've never seen one with this kind of range of motion. I've never seen one that you could spin like a washing machine. His tactics also don't make sense, because he's going with it, he's trying to like unscrew it and then kind of like kickflip off it. I don't even know if these two guys know each other. This guy comes from way downtown, like out of nowhere for a surprise RKO. I can't imagine that they plan to be this far away from each other. This might just be like a really nice coincidence, like I was trying to rob this place too. This guy's already here, let's try and help. Damn, we're not strong enough to help. And it's super slippery. No doubt his hands are sliced up from landing on that, but he's a trooper, so he, let, he doesn't let the pain bother him. He goes and rips that TV off. At this point, it wasn't about stealing it. It was about teaching the TV a lesson. You don't f with the slippery bandits. That TV thought it could make these guys look stupid? Unbelievable. No one makes these guys look stupid. I don't know if they got caught or anything, but I imagine if they did, they'd probably just immediately go to jail and hope that the video never surfaces. Like, they're in the courtroom. Uh, I didn't do it. Well, we have video. You did it. Don't show it. I did it. Just please don't show it. It's gotta be real. But yeah, that's it. See ya.